together we can show the world what we can do You are next to me and I'm next to you Push me on through until the battle's won No one's gonna give something to us Into each other we put our trust Standing united after the fight is done Yo, what's going on guys? It's me, the Ninja Reviewer here. Time for Nola Mix. Exciting episode review of the one and only, and I know my bad, I'm late on this. One Piece! Oh, wait, no, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm trying to be original. Right <clears throat> one Piece Motherfucking Greatness, episode 829 review. Now, this episode of One Piece, I'm not gonna lie, not really much happened in this episode, to be perfectly honest with you. I mean, yeah, granted, we did finally move things along, but I have once, one thing I have to say about this, though, is that the pacing. Uh, kind of hurt a bit. The pacing just wasn't as strong in this episode as I thought it was, but we did get some pretty cool stuff here. We finally got to realize that, you know, the rest of the plan has been explained, that pretty much what's going to happen is that Luffy thinks that, wait, shouldn't we actually annihilate her with the the, the gun, uh, the, the P2K, whatever the hell it is? Shouldn't we use that during the time where they're about to kiss? Is like, no, because by that time, that's when the bullet is about to strike him when she's about to shoot Sanji. Sanji's like, yeah, but I could easily just dodge it regardless. I could just dodge it thanks to my obviously observation because of his hockey, which makes sense that he could actually do that. The next thing is, is that the way they're going to do this is they have to break the pitcher. And then once that happens, everybody, including Big Mom, will be shocked with Big Mom losing her mind and using the actual um her actual hockey ability to go out of control when that happens even though her hockey is extremely powerful when she unleashes that when she gets completely angry what happens is is that when that actually triggers they have earplugs that capone actually made and when that happened they actually basically put the earplugs on their ears which is pretty obvious and with that it'll be able to cancel the sound when big mom goes insane which actually does make a lot of sense. So when it comes to basically that, we got that portion going on. So that's what's going to happen. Luffy's like, oh, but I also want to do something a little funny as a little entrance. It goes, no time to be funny. You know, realize you're just going to die out there, right? So, yeah. So basically, that's pretty much the gist of what we're actually going to be getting. And, you know, we got some little comedy moments like, oh, yeah, like like this, uh, this dumbass here is actually going to be the one to actually, you know, take all the other credit, you know. Thanks to the launcher, goes like, hey, who are you calling an asshole? Like, it's actually pretty funny. But, like I said, the pacing didn't really move along as much for this episode. Even though we did get some pretty cool stuff. Like, I really did like when, like, Sanji pretty... Well, because here's the thing. Uh, Mount Duvor, and then we had that other chick, which I forget her name. Uh, they were suspicious because they found out that uh, during the outskirts of the town, they find uh, Bobbin pretty much laying there on the ground, pretty much bloodied up, and they said that, yep, he's been shot, especially from the bullet wounds, and what happens is, is that they suspect that it's the Straw Hats that pretty much did something. So, apparently, uh, it was Straw Hats pretty much, you know, did something, but then they heard rumors about Sanji actually leaving the corridor at night, and they're like, Nani? And it's like, okay, so that means something is seriously going on. Look, I don't trust Cream, okay? Or uh, uh, Opera. I mean, not Cream. Opera. I don't trust Opera. He could just be covering his own ass in order to actually not get killed. But in reality, I think that's exactly what he's doing. So, Mount Devore ain't playing no games. He do not trust anything what Opera's about to do. So, we got that out of the way that he lost trust in him. And while they only, when they actually entered into Sanji's room, they knocked on his door. No answer except the eggplant dude who actually woke up. Now, this... I don't remember this being in the manga or not. I don't think it was. Like, yeah, I don't think this part was in the manga, actually. Because I think, well, obviously Sanji, you know, obviously I think in the manga version he just opens the door and then Sanji just pretty much pops up, but we didn't really get to see exactly how that was. But I think in the anime they did actually expand on that. And they actually showed that, like, the eggplant dude was just like, oh shit, Sanji's not here. And all of a sudden we see Sanji in the back. Well, before that, before what happens where we actually get Sanji from the door, um, okay, well, uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, let me go back, okay, to what actually happened before that. So, we get a little flashback story before, the, you know, the whole door scene with Sanji and Mount Devore. What happens is, is that Sanji scurries on to Skywalk, 
which is pretty badass. He skylocks all the way back into his room, gets the eggplant dude, he's like, look, just play along with me, okay? So, that's basically what they did in order to actually fool Mount Duvoir. And Mount Duvoir at first didn't really believe it, but then after a while, you know, when Ty just said, like, look, you know, I abandoned the Straw Hats, I don't work with them anymore, it's like, I don't give a damn, I'm not no pirate dog, I am the royal family bloodline of Yade of the Vinsmo family, yada yada yada. Just a little white lie in order to actually escape. So, that's pretty much what it is. Mount Devore, at least, you know, from true from his word, Asanji being a good actor, he actually believed him. And then Mount Devore and the other chicks and the other people, they all left the room. So, that's what happened there. So, the wedding is finally commencing. We have Capone pretty much on this fake little guard duty, which he's obviously there by the door. So we got the whole fake guard duty thing with Capone. Then we see the rest of the Vince Smokes, you know, lining up. They're getting prepared. You know, we have them. And it's like, where's, um, where's Reiju? It's like, yeah, Reiju, uh, well, she won her own separate room because you guys are kind of being a little bit too noisy about the party. So she just pretty much went in her own room and actually sleep. Well, at that again, I believe she is the youngest sister, I believe. She is the youngest of the trio, which kind of does make sense. Because <laughs> I think Yonji's like, yo, don't get into, don't. One of the bros, I forget, said, like, yo, don't get into adult business, okay? So that's basically what happened there. So when that happened, you know, we have that. They're finally lining up. The wedding is finally about to start. Everybody's all gearing up. Luffy wait, waiting in the mirror world. That was cool. I don't remember seeing that in the manga with him doing that. That was cool. I like the way there were certain cool little moments. Pretty interesting that the anime took liberties of doing. And then also, which was pretty funny, too, was that we actually got to see the um the skeleton oh not skeleton <laughs> uh big mom having a freak out like no my skeleton my magic skeleton is dead but then like anubis and prometheus are like no mama don't worry about it. look everything's gonna be cool but don't forget we have the wedding we have a delicious wedding cake coming up and she's like oh yeah eh whatever it's like yay wedding cake woo and it's like oh my god so that's pretty much we got that scene going on right there. So that right there was actually kind of funny. It's like it's like Big Mom has like ADD or some shit like that. It's kind of weird. So everything is all setting up at the place, and I think that's pretty much all Sally we have for this episode, really, because I know they finished off the chapter 859 from once covered, and they did a little bit of chapter 860, not too much, but the rest of it is going to be covered. And at the end, oh, I forgot to mention one more thing before I end this review off. I forgot. They mentioned something about Morgans and some other people from the underground world. Oh my god, okay. Morgans, I will not spoil who Morgans is, but you will find out exactly who this guy is when, yo, the Morgans, baby, okay, okay. I'm not gonna, because they shadowed the dude out, and they, sh they shadowed them out. They're the underground, the undergrounders and whatever from, you know, the underground, I don't know if they're broke, well, I basically know if they are. Brokers, they're basically working like with other big mom stuff like underground. And then we have like these other locations I forgot to mention too. We have like a cheese location. We have like a, a, a nuts island. You know, these nuts. We got these nuts island or very much like the nut shack island for like the call. And I, I swear to God, that dude is Mr. Peanut. That dude is the planter's peanut mascot if he had his own freaking island. That's crazy. So that was actually pretty cool there. But Morgans, it's one of those people that they shouted out during the last episode from the Undergrounders. I am not going to mention who one of them are. Again, it's one of those people who are named Morgans. So again, not going to spoil, but the preview, the preview sort of, kind of, yeah, I, actually no, I like the way the preview did it, but if you really freeze frame it, for us manga readers, we freeze framed it. Someone called it, I think it was on the One Piece podcast, they caught it, and they actually shown exactly what he actually looks like. But, if you don't want to be involved in spoilers, don't look at part of that, because then you'll kind of figure out eventually, or someone will probably magically spoil it on who Morgans is. But, other than that though, just wait until you, yo, it's crazy. Next week's episode is going to be pretty cool. I cannot wait though for next week's episode, which is going to intrigue me more. I am super excited for that. And then, if you saw in the preview, we got my man, the future. We have the future man, the slam jam 
Town downtown slam jam. Uh, oh my god, yo! I don't want to mention his abilities. I really don't because that's gonna be a huge spoiler. But you'll find out his abilities when we get to. Uh, yeah, they should probably reveal it within the next episode because from the preview, we kind of already see. Yo, oh, Roger Base is gonna be so freaking happy when he actually sees that. I so cannot wait for for next week's episode though. That is going to be pretty cool. I mean, I mean, not this week. Well, technically, now since I'm late with this review, it would be this Saturday coming up already. That's pretty quick. So not too long from now when we're going to get, you know, like, Morgans and all that. Uh, so, yeah. So we're going to get that, like, pr pretty soon. Uh, I mean, not more. Well, not just Morgans. We're going to get, you know, we're going to get, you know, the return of, um... We're going to get Katakuri, which, oh, man, I cannot wait. I am freaking happy. We're going to see this dude come in. Let's go. We saw him in the preview, and in the preview, it says they're going to reveal his ability. And when I saw that in the preview, I'm like, oh, my God, y'all. That is freaking cool. I cannot wait for this. This is a great way to start off the spring, the April anime lineup with this second half of the wedding. Man, it's really a shame we're not going to get a new opening, though, which I kind of doubt, especially the way they did the the Hope, this other version of Hope. I don't think we're going to get a new opening anytime soon, which is a damn shame because I really wish we can get one sooner than later. But overall, I'm going to give this episode, Sally, a 3 out of 5. It was kind of an okay episode, though, overall. It was just okay. Nothing really too spectacular. A little bit of hype, but not that much. It was just an okay, average One Piece episode at best. Compared to all the awesomeness that we saw way before that, all the cool, all the- Oh, wait, 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 hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Ah, oh, I forgot, there is one more thing I forgot to mention. Shit, I apologize, I apologize, I can't end the review yet. There is one more thing I know I forgot. The other thing I forgot is that Peckham's is pretty much tied up through the rocks with the Fishman Pirates and they tell them, look, we're going to be leaving the country and uh, it's going to be something really important that we can't tell you. That yes, we are going to be uh, betraying the Big Mom Pirates. And Peckham's is like, wait, why are you going to do this? This is treason. It's like, look, we can't let her find out. Which is why we're escaping. And you're going to be tied here without no one giving a damn. So, that's pretty much what we got. And then we got this little backstory about when Jinbei... Okay, oh yeah, this part was pretty cool too. I did like this part too with Jinbei. This part of Jinbei was pretty cool. Yo, this this is a true man. Bam, man. Do the right thing. Jinbei. For the motherfucking win, join yo. Once he actually, once this is all over, once he joins the Straw Hats, that that's gonna be pretty awesome though. So this could possibly mean pretty soon he will be joining the Straw Hats after all. Compared to you know, yeah, this is definitely gonna be happening. I believe he's definitely gonna be joining the Straw Hats right after all this is over. Hopefully, carrot too. Come on, come on, give me some carrot, please, please give me some carrot, give me some carrot as well, and then we could call this one of the best arcs of all time. But, okay, so, yeah, explain to them that, look, you know, like, this, I'm going to be the man, like, let's say even if I betray Big Mom, let's say I do join up a straw hat one day, I will sacrifice my own life, my own blood, whatever it takes to protect, uh, protect the life of my own captain of the future King of the Pirate generation. That was cool. That was pretty manly on Jimmy. Maybe I could amp up the points a little bit for that, but overall, it was just an okay episode. At best, though, but it is what it is. So, it was an okay episode, regardless of that part. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below of uh, this week's episode of One Piece, episode 829. See you guys this Saturday for episode 830, 830 of One Piece Greatness. And until then, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe as always. Click on that bell, join the squad, boys. Follow my social media plugins, gamer tags as well. Also, do not forget to also follow my Discord, which I also have below. If you guys want to follow my Discord, please follow it down below so you guys can actually join my server and talk, chat, chill, about anything really. So, in that server, anything goes. I'm not doing it for the whole fighting game community because we already have another Discord for that. So instead, I welcome you to this, just a Discord server for everybody to join pretty much. So, it's down there below. Go check it out. And yeah, you'll be pretty surprised what, uh, what's in store. So yeah, peace, soul, love, chicken grease, and the sky. Got any room? Ah, ha ha ha! Is the limit? MMA fans, keep supporting Rich Media, what you watch. That's it. I'll see you guys this Saturday.